everyone, it's Jacqueline for Pixie Dust PhD, and in today's video we will be doing something a little bit different. Instead of an information-packed, detailed-oriented video going over topics in Disney Vacation Club or Walt Disney World, I'm going to do an unboxing. Now, I'm not a minimalist by any means, as you can see from all of my things here, but I try not to buy too many things, frankly, just because I don't need very many things. But recently I got a coupon that was just too good to resist, so I ended up placing an order from Hot Topic and I have six Disney-related items to show you. I bought some clothing items and, very exciting for me, my first ever lounge fly. If you want to see my Disney-themed Hot Topic haul, stay tuned. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me in today's video. Whether you are new here because you like hauls or you are a long-time viewer because you generally enjoy my content, I am very grateful that you're here. If you enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up button to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. You can ring that bell icon to receive notifications whenever I post new videos. Hauls are pretty rare on this channel. As I said in the intro, I try not to buy too many things. There are two other videos that may be of interest, though. First, last summer I showed you my Disney-related birthday gifts, including my very first Disney Dooney and Burke. And then more recently I've got a video going over the Disney-themed holiday gifts that my partner and I exchanged during the 2020 holiday season. But let's get to this unboxing. So a little bit of background. What ended up happening was my partner ordered a holiday gift for me from Hot Topic, and then it ended up being backordered, which really is no problem. We knew it would be arriving late, but eventually my partner got another email saying it had just been cancelled altogether. Of course we were both disappointed, but in that cancellation email Hot Topic provided a 50% off coupon. Now you couldn't stack this with anything, so it didn't stack on top of sale prices or if you had hot cash or any other promotions. But it was good for 50% off your entire order from that full listing price. I ended up buying six items at half off each and spent about $100 total. Let's get into the unboxing. I did pre-open things a little bit to try to save on those crinkle noises, but otherwise this will be a live reaction. Things were sent to me in three separate packages, which I kind of hate. I wish that they would just wait until the whole order was ready to send me one box. It feels very wasteful to have these three separate mailers, but it is what it is. So the first and smallest package, which I anticipate will be t-shirts. Interestingly, it shipped to me like this. So there's no wrapping. They're not wrapped in plastic or anything, which doesn't necessarily bother me because that plastic feels pretty wasteful anyway. It's just probably the first time I think I've ever gotten a t-shirt shipped to me just folded up in, in a poly mailer. Two of the items I bought were for my partner, so we'll begin with those. In this package there were three t-shirts. Each of these t-shirts was roughly $23 to $25 full price. On average, with my coupon, that means we're talking about $12 for each of these t-shirts. Two of these I bought for my partner, so let's take a look at those first. So we've got this gray t-shirt that says See the World by a Balloon, established 2009, and you can see it's got this really cute mountain motif with the house and balloons flying by. So this is obviously a nod to the movie Up. My partner and I both of course like Disney, but we like our merchandise to be a little more subtle in that it doesn't necessarily scream Disney. At a glance this shirt just kind of looks like any other sort of national park shirt in my opinion, but then when you take a closer look, if you are a Disney Pixar fan, it very obviously is an Up t-shirt. So I thought this one was very fun. The next shirt I bought my partner, similarly, is a little bit of a subtle nod to Disney. It is a very bright t-shirt though, and it's basically this poster for the chef bot from Wally. -E. So front and center we've got the chef bot, and then he has this huge knife. There's the by and large logo in the top left. It says king of the kitchen, and then some foods down below. There's also this text at the bottom that's pretty blurry. Let me see if I can try to read it. It definitely says chef bot, and then in the small font I think it says by and large introduces the future of culinary excellence from blending to maybe basting, mixing and mashing. The chef bot has all of your cooking bases served, I think. Um, so the print quality on this is not super high and I think the same is true with the Up t-shirt. But honestly, for a $12 t-shirt, I'm not complaining. And generally when I buy things from Hot Topic, I'm not expecting them to be lifelong heirlooms that will last a decade or anything. They'll probably get good use for a year or two and then we'll end up recycling the cotton. And the shirts themselves are made out of 100% cotton. They're not terribly soft, they're not terribly itchy or anything. Nothing to write home about, a pretty standard t-shirt. The third t-shirt I bought for myself, and it is not subtle in the slightest, it is this huge Mickey pineapple head, which I absolutely adore. So for any of you that know me a little bit better, I love pineapple, so I have a hard time resisting buying anything pineapple, period. Back in my 2017 trip, there was actually a pineapple Mickey head pin that looked kind of like this. It reminded me a lot of that. 
That pin was a cast member exclusive, so you had to trade to get it, and I just never saw anybody with it, and I think about it all the time. So while I may never have gotten my pin, I now have the super fun t-shirt. Similarly, this t-shirt is 100% cotton, and the screen print quality is maybe not super high. You can see it's a little blurry in places, but honestly, I don't mind, and definitely from afar, you get the pineapple effect very well. Hot Topic caters to a bit of a younger audience, so my t-shirt, for example, was listed in junior sizes, and they made that pretty clear. I normally wear a medium in all tops, but given the junior size listing, I went ahead and got a large, and I think that that was appropriate. A medium probably would have been too tight for me to be comfortable. The two shirts I bought for my partner were unisex sizes, so they are definitely a little oversized on me. I would buy a unisex small for myself, but they'll fit my partner just great. Okay, let's move on to the next package, which I believe will be shorts. Yep, so these did come in plastic like I would have expected. Let's start with the less expensive of the two, which is this pair of board shorts. So again, this is not very subtle. It has these Mickey fruit heads. I think it's so cute. Again, you can see the pineapple Mickey is obviously why I bought these. These retail for about 20 bucks, and again, I got roughly half off that. These Mickey Mouse Fruits Girl Board Shorts were advertised again in junior sizes, so normally I wear mediums on bottom, but I went ahead and bought a large just in case. I think in this case I probably should have gone with the medium. The large is fine and it fits, but uh, it's, it's a little roomy. I think a medium would have been just fine, so I would say if you do want to buy these, go ahead and go with your normal size. And they are board shorts, so they're kind of like a spandexy material. The whole thing, you know, even past the waistband is stretchy and thin. Um, I can fully see through this. So I would hang out in them as loungewear, but I don't think I'll be wearing them to the parks. I would wear them to a water park for sure, or down to the pool, etc. There are no pockets. It's a pair of slip-on spandex and polyester shorts. And the second pair of shorts I bought were these really cute jean shorts with some Winnie the Pooh embroidery. These retailed for about $40, and I paid half of that. So you can see on the front we have Tigger as well as Pooh and Piglet. And then the back pocket, just one of them, has these flowers and a little bee friend. And these are actually fully functional jean shorts. The, the zipper and the front button are real, the front pockets are real, the back pockets are real. It's everything you would expect from a pair of jean shorts. Again, these were listed in junior sizes, and I haven't bought anything in junior size in a really, really long time. I went ahead and took the measurements around my hips as well as my waist. My measurements naturally correlated to two different sizes in the size charts because nothing can ever be easy with women's clothing. To err on the safe side, I ended up buying the larger of the two sizes. So I normally wear like an 8 or a 10 in women's bottoms very comfortably, and I ended up buying a junior size 11. These fit, certainly, and they're not going to fall off. It's not going to be a problem. They are a tad on the big side, though, especially since they're jean shorts. I expect that they'll stretch out a bit over the day. So if you are in between two sizes and you're feeling really hesitant about junior sizing, for me, I would say go with your smaller of the two sizes. One thing I did notice about these shorts is that the cuff isn't tacked down anywhere. Not on the sides, not along the fronts or back, so you can really do whatever you want with this cuff. I like the way the cuff looks though, especially because the embroidery stops at a certain place. Like, they definitely want you to wear the shorts cuffed. I am probably going to go ahead and hand sew the cuff on a few places along the entire length in order to tack it down and make sure it's not going to come undone. But other than the cuff and junior sizing and just women sizing in general being unpredictable, I think these are pretty great shorts. The embroidery is so cute, the color thread they used is vibrant. For the most part, they got most of the loose threads from the embroidery. I will have to clean up a few threads, but nothing major. I don't even think I registered that there was embroidery on the back pocket when I bought these. I just saw the front Pooh, Piglet, and Tigger and knew I definitely wanted them. It's a mid-weight denim. They're definitely not heavy. It's also not particularly light and stretchy by any means. It might be a little hot in Florida summers, but we'll see. I am probably going to bring these on my upcoming fall trip. Like I said earlier, these retail for around $40, and I ended up paying half that. Given my preferences for character designs and whatnot, and what I perceive to be the quality of these shorts, I would definitely pay more than $20 for these. I'm not sure I would pay the full $40, but at Hot Topic, there's almost always some kind of sale. It's really rare that you're going to pay full price. And finally, the thing I'm most excited to show you and unbox is my new and first lounge fly. I haven't taken this out of any of its packaging. I just opened the flap on the box, so sorry for all the crinkle noises, but I'm very excited. Let's get to it. All right, this came wrapped very well. Everything's encased in tissue paper, and then there's plastic on top of that. 
So through the magic of editing, let's fast forward to me getting to the actual goods inside. This is my new lounge fly. So this retails for $75 and again, I paid half that price. The official name for this is the Disney Princess Ice Cream Mini Backpack by Loungefly. Let's go ahead and unwrap the little cherry on top. Isn't it so darling? So the whole thing basically just looks like a giant ice cream, which I love. I have a beanie that looks like a swirl ice cream cone. I just like when items look like cute foods. And who doesn't like ice cream? So I'm definitely impressed with the packaging. Everything looks beautiful. There's no problems anywhere and they protected it really well. The front waffle cone pocket also came stuffed with some foam to make sure it didn't get crushed in shipping. Wrestle it out. Ooh. Hefty piece of foam. And then the main pocket is also stuffed with tissue paper. So again, the magic of editing, let's fast forward. She was very well stuffed and there also were a couple of these little um, silica packets to make sure that there was no moisture in there, which is great. I think this is your pretty standard lounge fly. Like I said, this is my very first one, so I don't necessarily know firsthand, but there is this zipper pocket on the outside and then the inside is basically just one big giant pocket. There's no compartments for organization, which is kind of why I have strayed away from lounge flies thus far. The practicality level is not my favorite. I really wish that the back had a zipper pocket for me to put small items like my medicines and you know my chapstick that I don't want to lose just in the bottom of this bag. And I also think they could really benefit from putting a cell phone pocket on the inside as well. And then the rest could still just be one big open space, but otherwise, you know, everything is going to fall to the bottom and get lost. Then there are these two tiny little side pockets. I have no idea what people use these for. You definitely can't put a water bottle in there. Maybe you can slip your sunglasses in there. If you have a smaller phone like I do, I still have an iPhone SE, the first generation SE, so it's quite small. That'll fit. But I'm a little bit wary about leaving my phone on my back in an exterior pocket like that. It's pretty easy to lose. Again, I wouldn't consider this subtle overall. I would be carrying a giant ice cream backpack, but in terms of the Disney factor, I do think it's pretty subtle. From afar, it just looks like a giant ice cream with little ice cream prints on it. But if you look at the little ice cream prints up close, they're very obviously princesses. So we can see this is Ariel, this surely is Aurora. Here we have Tiana. The Snow White one is super cute. I think this one's Mulan. If you look at the top flower, it feels like Mulan to me. I don't really get the other colors so much, but we'll see. Belle's is this gorgeous yellow with the red rose on top. And then Cinderella's, we have the light blue cone with the darker blue ice cream and a little glass slipper. Oh, and over here, this purple one is Rapunzel and you can see the little Corona sun on the top. I think that's all of the princesses that are included on this bag. I am very sad that Merida from Brave didn't make the cut to be on the bag, but I am honestly not surprised. She's kind of always outcast in these situations. The front pocket is actually textured, like this is raised. It's not just printed on, which I think is pretty neat. And the cherry on top is embroidered and it looks like it's stitched on. It feels pretty sturdy. Like I'm not very worried about it getting taken off by any means. Nothing too special about the zippers. They are just gold lounge fly zippers. I think this would have been really fun with a rainbow zipper, but you know, you can't ask for everything. And then we have, I believe just standard lounge fly backpack straps. So I'll put this on for you guys to take a look. They are adjustable, which is nice. This definitely is a backpack. It's not a convertible bag. So recently I've seen a trend that I absolutely love where backpacks can be converted into crossbody bags. Essentially these are hooked into like D clips and then there's other clips on the sides that you can use with a longer strap instead. That kind of added functionality I think would add a lot of value to the lounge fly bags for me. The bottom of the bag is the plain brown color to match the straps. It does not continue the little ice cream pattern. There also aren't feet or anything on the bottom for when you put it on the ground to keep it raised. It just, it's gonna touch the ground fully. Like all standard lounge fly bags, this is made from synthetic materials. It's not leather. I believe it's a polyurethane, of course, other than, you know, the metal parts. And specific to this bag or other ones like this, obviously there is a lot of white area. So I am a little bit concerned about it getting dirty as I use it. I may end up scotch guarding the bag. When you scotch guard items, and specifically I'm talking about spraying mostly accessories or shoes in my case to try to protect them from the weather a little bit, 
you really want to try a small area first to make sure that the fabric is compatible and you're not going to ruin any of the pattern with streaking or anything. I was naively hoping maybe I could do the bottom of the bag and see how that works, but because the ice cream cones aren't on the bottom, I'll have to test out a small patch on the back. If any of you have Loungefly bags that you have scotch guarded or similar before, please do let me know how that went for you in the comments down below. This is a very cute bag and I'm super excited to use it. Depending on how much I like or dislike the functionality of the bag while I am at home, we will see if it ends up coming to the parks with me or not on my upcoming trip to Walt Disney World. It feels like a shame not to bring it, but if it's just going to be an annoying hassle, I definitely won't, so we'll have to see how it goes. As I previously mentioned, this is my first lounge fly. The main reason I haven't bought one yet is I feel like $75 for a bag that is missing, in my opinion, a lot of functional features is just not worth it for me. At half off though, I am pretty happy with this purchase and I think it will definitely be worth that price. And like I said, Hot Topic is almost always running some sort of promotion, so you can probably snag this bag for around 30% off even if you don't have a specific cool coupon like I got. 30% off would put you slightly over $50, and at that price, it depends. I think it would probably be worth $50, but I'm not sure at the moment. As adorable as I think this bag is, it is so cute. I am hopeful that I actually don't fall in love with the bag because I know folks get sucked into collecting lounge flies and that's kind of an expensive hobby. They also take up quite a bit of space. So I would be perfectly happy with only liking this bag and not loving this bag. Let me know how you feel about lounge fly bags in the comments down below. That was my Hot Topic haul. Like I said, I got these six items for 50% off from that coupon. I also had just a little $5 off coupon that I used, so slightly under one more dollar off each. I ended up spending a total of about $100 for all these items. I'm very excited for my new Winnie the Pooh shorts and this lounge fly bag is absolutely adorable. I think my partner will like their t-shirts. I'm excited to have my Mickey pineapple fruit board shorts that I'll probably just lounge around in honestly. And then also my Mickey pineapple t-shirt. Let me know what you think of this haul in the comments down below. This was a bit of an unusual video for me. We strayed away from that information heavy content, but it's fun to switch up the style now and again and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to chat about anything Disney, always feel free to leave a comment down below on YouTube, or you can hit me up on other social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram at PixieDustPhD. I want to end here with really emphasizing that I'm not here at all to promote consumerism. That being said, while I didn't need any of these items, they definitely are bringing me some joy, so you know, pros and cons. I am absolutely going to do my best though to not become a Loungefly mini backpack collector because that is going to be expensive, it's going to take up so much room, and I really don't need more things. But if you love the Lounge Fly Mini backpacks, they bring you joy, you have the space, and you use them, heck, go for it. I'm very you do you. I hope the rest of your day brings you joy, and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.